Welcome back to Keep It Real Boxing. This is Cypher Box, and I just wanted to do a quick video on this whole situation between Canelo Alvarez and Triple G. Um, as you already know, these two guys were supposed to meet back in May for their rematch. Um, unfortunately, Canelo Alvarez tested pos positive for clenbuterol. He was then uh, suspended for six months. Uh, he's due. His suspension is due to end in August, which means he'll be ready to fight in September, potentially. Now, that's where, you know, Oscar De La Hoya and Triple G's team were planning to do the rematch in September once uh, Canelo Alvarez had uh, finished with his suspension, his six-month suspension. But another problem has now occurred where Triple G now is demanding a 50-50 split. He wants 50% uh, of the revenue from the fight. And... Oscar De La Hoya has turned around and basically said, no, you could take the 35% that we offered you before or it's it, there's no fight. Now, Triple G, now the deal back in, in May was that it was a 65-35 split, which means Triple G was supposed to get 35% and Canelo Alvarez as the A side was supposed to get 65%. Not only that, when you think about it, Golden Boy Promotions are also, you know, financially funding the fight and promoting the fight so naturally they're going to want the lion's share now triple g i get the feeling triple g it sounds like triple g from what tom loffler has said in you know in the last week or so he's basically turned around and said that triple g feels that he gave too much away in the, in terms of negotiations so basically for the first fight he gave way too much away and gave canelo Alvarez far too much and he took very little to make that first fight in the rematch again when they negotiated again he felt that he still gave too much away to canelo Alvarez, and he feels he's deserved of, of a little bit more of a lot more should i say um, and he feels he's deserved of 50 percent of the share now i get where triple g's probably coming from a little bit he's a unified champion he's holding the wba ibf and wbc belts he's holding three of the major sac four three of the four major sanctioning belts there including the ibo belt canelo alvarez is holding that ring magazine belt um obviously triple g's undefeated you know he's got a pretty strong fan base and stuff so i understand where he's coming from don't get me wrong i know a lot of triple g fans probably aren't gonna like what i'm gonna say in a minute um but i do understand i do get where he's coming from i get a little feeling that triple g feels that he probably deserves more because of because it's canelo alvarez's fault because the fight never took place in may um he feels like he's probably been messed about a little bit in terms of the failed drug test the cancellation of the fight etc etc and so forth this time now he's saying well no i'm deserving of 50 percent and i think he's probably playing on that failed drug test a little bit i know albert sanchez is for that's for sure with the things he said in the past um and they're thinking that they can get 50 percent of the of of the purse now here's my take on it you know this whole a side b side thing you know it's not about how many belts you hold yeah it's it's about status in the in the sport of boxing yeah it's about it is about money yeah it's about who has the bigger numbers in terms of who's who in the past has delivered bigger pay-per-view numbers who is considered a more of a who is more of a star in the sport of boxing you know and if i'm honest with you canelo alvarez is the superstar in boxing at the moment he is the rock star in boxing at the moment a lot of people might turn around and say to me well anthony joshua is the star in boxing i disagree because i feel anthony joshua still has a lot to do in terms of us and conquering the us market and building his profile over there a lot of people don't know who anthony joshua is in the us but globally everyone knows who canelo alvarez is and you know he's had you know more success in terms of his pay-per-view numbers uh you know fight gates etc and stuff like that so what i'm going to run through now is as i'm just going to quickly talk through some pay-per-view numbers for both these fighters now this is before the first fight between canelo alvarez and triple g last september and let's start with triple g triple g triple g had only two pay-per-view fights before his fight with canelo alvarez and those were against david lemieux and daniel jacobs now against david lemieux that fight in terms of pay-per-view only did 153,000 pay-per-view buys 
okay, which is a really low number. There was a lot of criticism about that back then, I remember. Um, and then his other fight, his second pay-per-view fight was against Daniel Jacobs, which did 170,000 pay-per-view buys. Again, not a very high number. And then that totals to 323,000 pay-per-view buys. Before Canelo Alvarez, that was it. That Those were his pay-per-view numbers. Now, you've got to look at those pay-per-view numbers. A lot of uh, Triple G fans out there will probably turn around and say to me, it's not fair. Triple G should get more. He's deserving of 50%. I get, I get where you're coming from, a fan point of view. But like I said to you earlier on, this is about numbers. You know that saying... Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Well, these numbers don't lie, unfortunately. Yeah, it shows that before his fight with Canelo Alvarez, Triple G was not a pay per view star. Yeah, I repeat, was not a pay per view star. Okay, you know, if that was the case, then majority of his fights would be pay per view and he would, you know, he would do, you know, great numbers in terms of pay per view. But if you look at his history, he's had two pay per view fights and neither one of them have generated. You know enough pay-per-view buys, uh, pay-per-view buys, to, to put himself in a position where he is the A side in this whole situation with Canelo Alvarez. Now let's look at Canelo Alvarez's numbers. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk Canelo Alvarez. I pick, there's six fights here. I've got here. You know, listed. Uh, let's start with Liam Smith. Now in the US, no one knew who Liam Smith was. We know who he is here in the UK, of course, but in America, no one knew who Liam Smith was. You know, no one knew that he was Paul Smith Jr.'s uh, brother for crying out loud. Um, but that fight was on pay-per-view and that fight generated 300,000 pay-per-view buys. You know, that's not bad considering Canelo Alvarez was going up against a no-namer. You know, in terms of the US market, Liam Smith was a no-namer. No one knew who he was and he still managed to pull 300,000 pay-per-view buys. There's another fight here I've got down here uh, I've got Amir Khan against Amir Khan that was 600 pay-per-view buys Angulo when he fought Angulo that was 350,000 pay-per-view buys against Miguel Cotto that was 900,000 pay-per-view buys against Chavez yes Chavez Jr. was a crap fight it was a disappointing affair we know that but still it grossed a million pay-per-view buys okay and then the big one which was against Floyd Money Mayweather which you know, the pay-per-view buys for that was 2.2 million. If you add up all those numbers, that's 5.35 million pay-per-view buys just from those six fights alone. That there just already tells you who's the A-side, who has the star power. Yeah, you know, and a lot, like I said, a lot of Triple G fans aren't going to like what I'm saying here. But at the same time, it amazes me that Triple G has such a strong following, yet he has such low pay-per-view numbers before the fight against Canelo Alvarez last September, you know, and the fact that he's only had two pay-per-view, uh, two pay-per-view fights as well for that matter, which shows HBO weren't willing to invest in pay-per-view buys for Triple G because they realised from the David Lemieux fight that he doesn't sell. And then when he fought Daniel Jacobs, they thought, well, here's another opportunity, let's give it a go again. And still the numbers weren't great at 170,000 pay-per-view buys. So, you know, the fight against Canelo Alvarez last year, that generated 1.3 million pay-per-view buys. So it just shows that Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion, can have pretty much any fighter in the ring with him and he can generate decent pay-per-view numbers from decent pay-per-view numbers to incredibly high pay-per-view numbers, right? Depending on the level of opponents. But Triple G can't do that. Yeah, even with the likes of a Daniel Jacobs in the ring, he still couldn't generate a high enough pay-per-view buy number. But you look at, um, if you look at Canelo, now Liam Smith, who's more well-known, Daniel Jacobs or Liam Smith? Um, you know what I mean? You know, Angulo or Liam Smith in terms of casual boxing fans. So, you know, when you look at it that way, you know, Canelo Alvarez is the A-side here, guys is what I'm basically trying to say. You know, the numbers do not lie. You know, let's not forget Oscar De La Hoya's, you know, Golden Boy Promotions. They're funding, they're promoting the fight. They're financially invested in the fight more than anyone. Yeah, they're making the fight. They're the A side. They're offering the contract. Yeah. So I personally don't think Triple G's in a position 
to be demanding 50%. Yeah, some of you guys might disagree with me and that's fine. You're all entitled to your opinion. This is just my opinion, okay? In my opinion, he's in no position to demand 50%. He may have had a better chance if he turned around and said, hey, look, I'm not happy with 35%, but I would like an increase from what we negotiated for last, last May. I want 40%. Golden Boy would have probably gone away with that and said, all right, let's look at the numbers and we'll get back to you. And they probably would have given him that extra 5%. But he's asking for an extra 15%. He wants an even split for the fight. You know, it's just not going to happen. You've got to look at it from a business point of view, guys. Yeah. Golden Boy are, are, are funding the fight. They're making the fight. They're making the offer. They're not going to give you a 50-50 split. You know, part of me, there's a part of me that feels like is this generally that Triple G wants and this is what something he feels that he deserves? That's why he's asking for 50% or there's a part of me and I'm not saying he is or he isn't. I, I'm definitely, you know, I'm not trying to accuse him anything of here, but is there a sign here that he may be pricing himself out of the fight? That he doesn't want the fight? I don't know. Um, what are Triple G's options then if the fight with Canelo doesn't happen? Well, simple. You know, he either fights his IBF uh Defense makes his IBF uh, defense against Drevachenko. Um, we know there's been a lot of pressure for, for that fight to be made. Um, or, you know, the Mauricio Suleiman, the WBC president, has recently come out saying that if there's no Canelo fight, then Triple G must make his mandatory defense for his WBC title against Jamal Charlo. You know, or his other option is that he tries to make a unification fight. If he doesn't want those two fights, he tries to make a unification fight with... Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, who holds the WBO version of the middleweight title, world title, uh, which, as you know, a unification fight will always supersede uh, a regular title defense or mandatory defense. We know that. But the problem is that Billy, with Billy Joe Saunders is Canelo Alvarez and Oscar De La Hoya are now talking to Frank Warren about potentially setting up a fight with Billy Joe Saunders. So, you know, if... Canelo, if that fight does happen and Canelo beats Billy Joe Saunders and takes his WBO title, that puts him in an even more power position because if Triple G wants to unify and become undisputed champion, he's still going to have to go for Canelo Alvarez. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think from a you know from a strategic point of view, it's not a smart idea for Canelo for Triple G to be asking for fifty percent. I think at best he could probably ask for forty percent. That would probably be fair, um, but I definitely don't agree with him having you know him that he deserves 50 percent you know it's like i said to you guys it's is triple g a good fight yes he is a good fighter you know I, i've enjoyed watching him fight many times but it's all about star power it's all about pay-per-view numbers it's all about gate receipts you know it's all about global super superstardom and unfortunately that all sits with canelo alvarez and not triple g so therefore in my opinion triple g is not deserved of 50 a 50 50 split at best, 40%, if he's lucky, you know, he can probably try and push and negotiate for 40%. Or maybe that's what they're trying. Maybe they're asking for 50-50, but they're hoping they can get an extra 5%. So you start high with your estimation. And like I've, I've talked about this before, is that's all about haggling and negotiation. You set a 50% marker, you know, like Joseph Parker did against Anthony Joshua. He said, I want 50%. Then he said, oh, I'll come down to, you know, 40, 40%, I think it was, or 45%. I'll come down to 40% eventually settling somewhere between 30 and 35 percent or something like that it was so, you know if i remember right same thing triple g might be doing the same thing here asking for 50 percent, but really he's hoping to get an extra five percent and he's looking for that 40 percent increase that five percent increase to make it 40 percent who knows but i definitely don't think he's going to get 50 percent oscar de la Hoya definitely has put his foot down and said no you take whatever we offered you before otherwise there's no fight and if I was Triple G and I want a little bit more money, I would be sensible in my request and think, okay, I'm not going to get 50%. Let's try and negotiate for 40%, you know? But in my opinion, definitely Canelo Alvarez is the A side in this affair. I, you know, like I said, it's about, I said, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to knock Triple G, but, and I was critical of uh, Canelo Alvarez and his failed drug test and all that sort of stuff. So don't get me wrong. I understand where people are coming from. People are saying it's not fair. It's not fair. I understand. But boxing is not about, you know, what's fair. Unfortunately, it's a business. You've got to remember that. It's not what's about fair. You know, what's fair. It's about the numbers. Who's got the better numbers, you know, to support their claim to being an A-sider.
yeah and that's the way it is unfortunately guys um give me your opinion let me know what you think do you agree do you disagree with what i'm saying here uh would love to hear what you have to say guys um uh, that's where i stand on this whole subject as always guys like share and subscribe until next time this is cypherbox reminding you to keep it real